a recent uh, visa ban, the fee for a UAE visa was $100, equivalent to about 155,000 at the exchange rate of 1,555 per dollar. However, the visa fee has since been hiked to a struggle in that, the difference about uh, 485,000, uh, representing a 311.58% increase. Notably, the new 640,000 Naira visa fee does not even guarantee the issuance of a visa, so it's non refundable. Now, the issued document verification number will only be valid for 14 days or until the visa application is processed, whichever comes first. Now, it's worth recalling that the UAE imposed the visa ban on Nigeria amid several diplomatic disputes between the two countries. Additionally, Dubai's Emirate airline halted flights to Nigeria due to the Central Bank of Nigeria's inability to remit an estimated $85 million in the revenue to the UAE. Now, following negotiations, the Nigerian government assured citizens in June that the visa ban would be lifted soon. Now, during the same month, the government also announced that it had paid 98% of the $850 million owed to the UAE. Well, we're going to discuss all of that. I have uh, Mustafa Ewinla. He is uh, an asset surveyor and a public affairs analyst who will be looking at uh, the impact of all of this new development on travel and, of course, um, business generally. Good morning to you, uh, Mustafa. Thanks for joining us Thank on you. Business Thanks Insight. So what do we have on our plate right now? A staggering difference of over 300%. Uh, it's as though we are taking a visa to heaven. So uh, what are your thoughts? <laughs> so, uh, you know, waking up to that news on Monday after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided by President Bola Netanyahu, mm. for me it was a, you know, air of relief to a lot of Nigerians who have a lot of businesses, you know, and transactions to do in Dubai. Again, I, my biggest uh, shock was just the the recently reviewed price mm. from uh, $100 to about almost $400, which I think has, which I think is a huge difference. If you convert that to Naira, that's about almost 640000 Naira for a visa fee mm. to United Arab Emirates. Mm. So the implication of that is that... Um, a lot of Nigerians who are frequent travelers to Dubai, as we speak today, have started lamenting. A lot of Nigerians, you know, have opted to send their kids abroad to study in Dubai mm. because of their, you know, good educational sector. And also a lot of Nigerians also have multiple businesses in Dubai. So I think that that price needs to be revealed again. But I think that a fee of 640,000 naira that is non-refundable is too outrageous. Mm. The use the visa fee for United Kingdom is less than is less than 200 pounds, less than that for six month visa. Mm. The visa fee to USA is about I think 115 dollars. So for Dubai to Come up with that, you know, arrangement of six hundred forty thousand, which is almost about four hundred dollars. I think is totally outrageous. But if you look at it, really, uh, I'm trying to understand the border language of the UAE, and of course, what's uh, the issues we have had over time uh, with, um, you know, them over Basa agreement and all of that. But my my thoughts really are that uh, is it that they are trying to make it a latest, or they just are trying to see who exactly can really afford or who they really need to see in their in their country or they just don't want all or maybe just they just want to be very discriminated to nigeria so generally. so sometimes last year dubai the, the uae you know put a ban on about 19 african countries mm. unfortunately nigeria was part of that list burkina faso was there ghana was there cameroon was there togo was there so for them to even reach a, a consensus of trying to lift the ban on Nigeria, on Nigeria, I think is a good step. Again, that amount of visa fee is a way to discourage discourage a lot of Nigerians who cannot afford that kind of amount of money from coming to their country. Mm. Again, there have been a lot of diplomatic disputes with Nigeria and Dubai, but for the president to reach a, a consensus with them on even lifting that ban, for me, I think is a good step, but the amount of visa fee is totally outrageous. If you look at um, Dubai as a country, a long time ago was a desert. Are you a yeah? Yes. And one of the things that is currently giving them edge over many other countries is their tourism sector. Basically. 
2017, 2017, their the travel and tourism sector in Dubai gave them about $41 billion. Added that, I mean, in terms of revenue to their GDP, $41 billion. So travel and tourism has been a very uh, fantastic avenue for Dubai to generate money. And that is what has continued to put them in the map. A lot of people, what, I mean, if you go to Dubai now, what are the jobs in Dubai? Mm. I can tell you that I can tell you that a lot of a lot of people who travel to Dubai travel for the sake of travel and tourism. Okay. There are no jobs because most of their jobs are given to their own people. Mm. And again, again, that's a reminder to, to tell us that we need to also grow Nigeria. Mm. If Nigeria is in a better place, if we have all the things we need as a people, as a country, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of jobs, in terms of in two thousand and seventeen. Tourism gave Dubai, created about 570,000 jobs mm -hmm. to people living in Dubai, tourism alone. So if we develop just a sector of our country, mm -hmm. if it's tourism sector, if it's a lot of you know, power sector, everything that will make us function properly as a country, mm -hmm. we will see how our GDP will also, you know, live up to expectations. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like I said, people are already lamenting. I, you know, I, I, I know, I know some couple of my friends who have kids living in Dubai. I mean, mm. studying in Dubai, and now all these issues of the visa price, the visa fee, is becoming a serious nightmare to them. Again, if you look at in terms of technology, the reason why Dubai is saying you cannot come to our country and be doing what you like. This is our rules and regulations. If you cannot meet up to these rules, stay, stay wherever you are. Mm. Dubai has the one of in terms of technology, they have one of the most sophisticated tools. In terms of technology, Dubai has the tallest, if the tallest building in the world. That alone is giving Dubai a lot of billions yearly. The tallest building in the world is located in Dubai in the entire world. That's Burj Khalifa. About 163 floors. There's no building compared to that building anywhere in the world. That alone is generating a lot of massive revenue for Dubai. Okay, I get all of that. Uh, Dubai has its own, uh, you know, potentials and what yes, is please. everywhere. Yes, so, what I, um, the question right that would be, what is in it for Nigeria? If we, uh, what do we really stand to lose or gain in all of this? Because from what I've read so far, uh, the UAE Nigeria trade in 2022, uh, what was exported uh, to uh, to Nigeria was about. Um, Six hundred and fifty-three million dollars, uh, and the main products uh, that UAE uh, exported to us were mainly uh, refined petroleum and broadcasting equipment and um, cars. So, looking at all of this now, is it that uh, Nigeria tend to really lose so much if uh, we don't really do business with them, judging so, by their 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 entry uh, visa entry fees and all of that? So, so amongst different countries of the world, mm. there is always this tie. And this level of uh, relationship that coexists between them, mm. Nigeria, Dubai have always have a very smooth, you know, relationship in terms of businesses and also relationship in terms of, uh, I mean, our citizens who live in Dubai. I know that one time we had a lot of Nigerian living in Dubai that had issues, but I mean, they've been able to, you know, settle those issues in terms of immigration rules and all that. But again, there are lots of transactions that are currently ongoing with the UAE and Nigeria. Mm. A lot have, some of them have also helped our economy positively. Okay. In terms of tourism, in terms of export and import, a lot of tra transaction. So for what it is, if our country, if the government is saying that this is our condition, if you want us to continue, the, the list of other countries, on, the number of other countries on that list, they've not been, lifted yet. Mm. It is only Nigeria, out of those 19 countries, only Nigeria has been able to reach a consensus with them for them to even say, let's... But again, what is the cost of visa fee for Dubai's coming to Nigeria? I'm sure it's not as much as no, 640,000 naira. So those are the issues. So until we make our country a sought-after country too, mm. where people will go through a lot of orders like this to like come. Them. So for, for that to happen, we must create value in Nigeria, mm. what what is the thing? What is that thing that will make people pay such amount of visa fees to come to Nigeria? We must create value. Mm. 
Okay, so looking at all of that now, with all of this new development, yes. with the visa fee, I'm sure a lot of people will feel a bit inhibited to just want to travel to the United Arab Emirates. Uh, judging by the fact that uh, they export some major um, stuff to us, especially those yeah. in the broadcast industry, yeah. like you said, their, their technology is like um, second to none, yeah. and the other aspect that we uh, you know, export, even... Um, uh, 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 petroleum, petroleum product and yeah. all of that. So, so what impact do you think it would really have, you know, in the next um, couple of months, uh, if uh, Nigerians uh, may not really have like um, a freeway or maybe uh, the resources to do business? They're judging by all of this requirement, and that uh, if even if they eventually have to go, so I'm sure it will have like a ripple effect on so, them, you know the local economy. So, so the ripple effect of that is that there's going to be. A snag in um, the amount of transactions that people can go to Dubai to, you know, to execute, mm. and it's also even our government. There are lots of transactions going on between the the UAE and Nigeria in terms of exportation and importations. Mm. So when people cannot even get visa because of the exorbitant fee involved, it will of, of course it will you know reduce the you know the volume of people going over there to do transactions. I know people who go there to buy gold. I know people who go to Dubai to buy dresses, come back to Nigeria, sell it at a very sure. affordable rate, and they're making money. So, even to, so, so, so the ripple effect is going to be very, very discouraging. And I also think that um, something still has to be done on that amount. Yeah. The fact that it is non refundable for me makes it very more difficult. I mean, yes, we know that a lot of I mean, if you want to travel to Kenya, a lot of countries are still visa on arrival. Yeah. Now, if Dubai is saying you have to pay this amount of money, that means you have to pay and issue, um, initiate your processes from the beginning from here. Mm. You must have gotten your visas from here before you even leave. Mm. Countries like last time I went to Kenya about four years ago, about a few years ago, it was, I mean, the visa fee then was about $50. I, I, I mean, I paid at the point of entry in mm. Kenya. Okay. Some other countries are like that. You pay at the point of entry. Yes. And I think at some point, Dubai even was like that mm. until things became more difficult. And so, so it's not really that far, but every other time, Certain leaders of different countries begin. They also start to look at ways to, you know, to make sure that whatever laws they are churning out favors their citizens, not those coming. Okay. So I mean, and and that's the way to think. So I mean, I mean, I, I really cannot blame them, but I mean, they should also look at the international ties they have with Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria is also a very blessed country. There are lots of opportunities there too. A lot of people, a lot of Dubai, you know, citizens also come here right. to do transactions. You see their businesses around. Okay, let's take it one step further now. Yes, Aside please. from the, the DVN that you've talked about and the visa yes, fees, now there's also a requirement, I think, proof of fund of about um, $10,000. 10, you know, so what's the implication of all of that? And let us just uh, put that side by side with some of these countries uh, that um, Nigerians usually uh, go for, you know, for travel. For travels. You know, the UK, the United States, and Canada. Let's just place them side I by mean, side. I mean, so so putting the, so also adding that as a for me is a, is a big is a very big restriction. Mm. If you want to go to the UK, I don't think the UK has any any limit of proof of funds in your account. Mm. UK, I mean, the last time I went to the UK, I'm not sure I had one thousand dollars in my account, and I was given visa. Mm. So if a country like Dubai is coming to say that you have to have ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars equivalent. That's about almost. I'm sure that's about almost ten million. Mm. Over ten million, mm. if I'm correct. So I mean, about fifteen million. There, about fifteen million. So what is? So what is? Why is that supposed to be a criteria? Mm. I'm going to Dubai for vacation. Dubai is not a country I want to. I want to jackpot to or run to. Mm. Dubai is mainly their major attraction is tourism. True. Going for vacation. A lot of Nigerians they are even coming back to. Them. I have a friend who lived in Dubai for three years. He, he eventually came back. I had somebody to, so there's actually no jobs because their jobs are very difficult to get. Mm. And their jobs are kind of limited to their own people, except for those who go there to do all kinds of um, maybe domestic jobs and all that. There are no jobs there. So their jobs are really restricted to their own people. So, so, the, so if I have to, if I have to have $10,000 in my account because I want to go to Dubai, that's total madness. I mean, it's not really, so again, there are a lot of other countries people can go to, to even if it's for tourism. That, so, but then, is there is there law? Is there country? It is either you is there. I mean, is, is that you, you know, you buy by it, or you, you, by it or you speak to your country again. That's the re reminder for us to say, let's grow Nigeria too. Let's make sure this country becomes a sought after country that people will be paying through their neck, through their nose to come to. 
and it's doable if our government is ready. So on the surface of it, now if you look at it now, so what they are trying to say in other words is that uh, maybe they might not just want people to come on um, maybe on a visit or a as visit. per holiday visit or maybe just for people. Is it like they're just targeting so that's the way to cut off and that's the way to, so that's the way to reduce uh, the inflow of people, just anybody coming in, they want to mm. limit it to certain class of people. Yes. If you are saying ten thousand dollars, it must be. I can I mean, somebody who is just going for tourism, where is he going to get ten thousand mm. dollars to put in, in his account? Mm. So it's a way to reduce and limit it to certain class of people. Okay. And it's a way to also re say, even though we are lifting the ban, but let's just give you these conditions. If you can meet up, no problem. If you, the, that condition is too is too stringent. Paying up almost seven hundred thousand for visa fee. Mm. When I applied for my UK visa, I didn't even pay up to 500k for the two years visa. I mean, mm. this, this is just about, this visa we're talking about is just barely two weeks or how many weeks mm. visa. So that, that's, that's a lot of money. And that's the way to cut off people. Okay, so in all of this now, so because um, so a school of thought might just say that you gave me something with the left hand, you're trying to collect it back with the right hand. Now. So in all of this, uh, yes. negotiations, bilateral talks, bilateral relations yes. uh, between the federal government and the UAE now, what would you advise the federal government to do as we round off? And uh, because in all of this, uh, uh, Nigerians still need to uh, do some sort of business. People who have businesses already yes. in the United Arab Emirates, yes. they still have going concerns and they still have stakes there. So somehow, one way or the other, they still need to go and come back. You know, so what do we need to do at so the I, moment? So, as I, the federal so, government I, level so I think our government still needs to continue to engage the UAE authorities. There's a need to reduce that, I mean, going from $100 to $400 is so exorbitant. There's mm -hmm. need to review that visa fee downward in order to enable people to, you know, to find it easy to go there and do their businesses and, you know, come back and all that without any, you mm -hmm. know, without having to break the banks. Again, our country also, we need to grow Nigeria. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Whatever people are going to Dubai to see, we can have them here. We have the resources. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, if people in Dubai also are finding, are seeing Nigeria as a sought after country, then they will know that there's a reason for them to reduce those yeah. stringent and exorbitant fees that put in just to come to their country. So, okay, just to add to that, um, um, uh, at the long run, today is um, the UAE uh, visa requirement, or uh, tomorrow it might be another country, okay. you know, trying to. Uh, uh, reduce the their migration um, rate or immigration, and that uh, they might put in some of these uh, stringent requirements. So, so, what can we do as Nigeria, as a country, Nigeria, as Africa or African, so that we uh, uh, will not just be at the beck and call of uh, some of um, these uh, Western countries, as it were? So, so I mean, it's simple. I've said it. The only okay. thing we can do is to also put ourselves in a position of value. Okay, value. If you put yourself in a position of value, people will be coming to look for you. You mm. won't have to be begging anybody or be, be at anybody's mercy. Mm. Somebody was telling me something last week that become a, become a person of value, become a country of value. Mm. People will be chasing after you just to do business with you, just to mm. come and see what you have in your country. Mm. But when you don't put yourself in that position, you continue to be the one at, at the mercy of people. Right. That's exactly what's playing out with Nigeria and Dubai now. All right. Most a very big thank you to you, uh, Mustafa Ewinla, for uh, the insights that you have shared uh, today on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, we've been looking at uh, the new uh, visa requirement uh, for Nigerians uh, to go to the UAE. You need to have about um, 640,000 naira for a DVN uh, plus a visa fee. And you need um, also to have um, a proof of own uh, of um, funds of about ten thousand dollars. So in all of this, uh, Mustafa has said that we need to grow our own economy. We need to place value on ourselves so that way uh, people will see Nigeria as a place, a destination of choice for doing business, for tourism, for travels, and all of that. At the end of the day, would have um, the foreign exchange that we have been talking about, which has you know depleted over time. Well, that's the size of the show. My guest has been Mustafa Ewenla. He is a, a real estate survey and a public affairs analyst. We'll return again same time next time. My name is Justin Akadone. Bye for now. <laughs>